All right. Hello, my name is Sarah Redmente. I'm the editor of The Gear. I was also corresponding secretary for my chapter a couple of times, so I'm going to be going over what the job responsibilities of a corresponding secretary are. A lot of people have different ideas of what a corresponding secretary does, and that's largely based on the role that they take on in their chapter. Um, some chapters, corresponding secretary only does the communications with alumni via email. They do um, phone calls, texts. They post things on Facebook. Some of them do social medias. Some of them, you do the website. It really depends on the chapter, how your corresponding secretary functions. But there is an official job description of corresponding secretary, which we're going to go over. And in, in all reality, it's all of these positions. According to the Policy and Procedures Manual, the corresponding secretary corresponds diligently with the other chapters, alumni associations, the executive director, the alumni of the chapter, they submit articles for the gear of Theta Ta to me, the editor of the gear, and they keep the chapter alumni record up to date. They also create, supervise, or monitor the chapter's website and other social media. The corresponding secretary shall be the point of contact for the Student Advisory Committee Regional Delegate for their region, unless the chapter chooses to designate the responsibility to another member. Let's break that down. Communications. We're communicating with other chapters. We're communicating with alumni, alumni associations, the executive director, and chapter alumni. Kunal, welcome back. I'm almost there. Um, we also are responsible for submitting articles for the gear. At least once a semester, you should be submitting an article for the gear. You should be updating alumni records and updating social media and websites. And, and you don't hear me? Ooh, there's an echo. There is, there is. Yep. Oh, that's oh, that's strange. strange. Uh, uh, there's there's an echo. Was there anything at the left? I don't know, but for the recording's sake, I'm just going to go ahead and read yours because the echo is going to be rough. So for communications, corresponding yeah, yeah. secretaries are a really important part of Theta Ta. Theta Ta is a national organization and communication is essential to keep us functioning and uh, ebbing and flowing. So communication is intentional. It is a two-way street. We have to be prepared to reach out and engage even if we don't get a response and we need to be receptive of others. Chapters typically have about a 10% response rate for communications from central office, alumni, and other chapters. The executive director is one of the people you'll have to communicate with. Central office will usually be in a regular communication with you, your regent, your scribe, your treasurer. It's important to keep central office apprised of all your chapter matters and ensure your fellow officers are responding to those emails. Like Jim Gaffney said earlier in the opening remarks, it is extremely important if you're getting an email from central office. You get the Velocitas on a regular schedule, and that, in, in, in addition to the other correspondence you get from central office, those are extremely important. They would not blast email you if it wasn't something that we needed you to see. You're also going to be communicating with other chapters. Who are you communicating with? You're communicating with the regents, the corresponding secretaries, or the other student members. So it's important when you're communicating with other chapters to understand and be intentional with who you're trying to reach and why you're trying to reach them. Um, if you're talking to the regent, make sure that you are addressing them as the regent, make sure that what you're trying to say has to do with the regent, if it's corresponding secretaries, et cetera. Um, what are you sending out? I uh, highly recommend you send out regular emails and correspondence about the events that you're hosting and creating a newsletter for at least once a month. I think that they're extremely engaging and a lot of alumni respond well to newsletters from the chapter. And you don't have to just send it to your chapter alumni. You can send your newsletters and your events to any of the surrounding chapters near you, even if they're hours away. It doesn't hurt to invite them and send things out for the events that you are hosting. You can also talk in your correspondence about initiations, petitions, etc. When are you communicating? Try to make sure that you are communicating weeks in advance and find a cadence that works for your chapter. Monthly is a good starting point, especially for newsletters. Creating a monthly newsletter is great. 
Your alumni will love it. You can make it very visually appealing. Uh, it'll catch their eye and it'll catch their attention. Um, in terms of events, just communicating it as often as you are having these events and communicating it weeks in advance of the events so that your alumni and your chapters have enough time to be able to turn out and come to your events. How are you communicating? You can communicate through email, through text, through social media. The most important thing with that is to just figure out how best do or does your audience respond? If you've been reaching out to a chapter that's nearby to you and you realize that they answer much more quickly and efficiently with text messages, that's great. Utilize that. Let that be your communication method. If they're responding better through email or they tell you they prefer email, email them. Whatever it takes to make sure that communication is getting through. And why are we emailing? What is the most important takeaway you have for your audience? Keep it direct, keep it intentional, and keep it succinct. You don't want to flood someone's inbox with a ton of information when you really just need a little bit. Um, to, a little bit goes a long way with emails. Specifically, communications with alumni. You should be reaching out to your alumni associations and your chapter alumni. Anything and anywhere nearby you, you want to get communications out to invite them to events and to update them on what's going on with your chapter. Communicating with alumni is just like communicating with your other chapters, only it's a little bit more challenging. Your alumni span many different age groups all over the country. So you need to make sure that your correspondence is relevant and accessible for a variety of age groups and for a variety of locations. You need to make sure that you're communicating what events you have coming up. It's never a bad idea to communicate personal stuff with your chapter in terms of um, moments that you're really proud of. If you're really proud of an event that you did or of something that one of your brothers accomplished, send it out there. Let the alumni know. They love to see that. And this is good practice for when you go to write your article for the gear. It's extremely important that you have these stories and these events and these ideas in the back burner so that when you go to write your article for the gear, you have something to work with. Um, send out your achievements. Send out opportunities you have to get involved and ways to donate. Um, Alumni will always tell you they don't want to just be told to get like what, what financially you need. If you're going to ask the alumni in your area for financial assistance and you're going to reach out for donations, you should three, four times as many times be reaching out to tell them about what's going on in the chapter and inviting them to events. If you only ever ask for money, you're not going to get a lot of response for your, from your alumni. The more you communicate with them, the better relationship you build as corresponding secretary, the more receptive they will be to helping you out in those ways. Um, when are you corresponding? You need to do this months in advance. Alumni are very busy. They have typically full-time jobs. They're getting married. They're starting families. They're at that age where they need a ton of advance warning. The more time you give them, the better. What relationship do you want from your alumni and the alumni in your area? What relationship do you, they want to have with your chapter? Make sure that the tone of your email reflects what you're looking for. If you're looking for participation, great. Make sure you emphasize that you need participation in your events. How are you emailing? You can send out mass emails. Multiple methods include email, social media, monthly newsletters in bold. Those are really helpful. Um, and those are great. Mass emails are great. But if you really want specific answers, specific turnout, make sure that you also send out individual messages um, whenever necessary. Another responsibility of the corresponding secretary that often gets overlooked is the upkeep of your chapter's alumni records. You should be keeping a list of your alumni up to date with, at a bare minimum, their name, grad year, and email or phone number. I recommend including as much of these as you can, name, grad year, email, phone number, permanent address, LinkedIn, and highlighting what their preferred means of communication is. I, as corresponding secretary, had some brothers that would absolutely never check their email, but they would answer their texts. I had alumni that would never check our social media unless it was Facebook. So making sure that you know how to reach the people that you need to reach and making sure that you are able to do that via email or phone number, making sure you have those records. 
Um, if you don't already have all of this and you want to try to update your alumni records, which I highly recommend trying to update them, um, I would recommend reaching out to some of your more recent corresponding secretaries. They probably have a lot of contacts for your alumni, at least your recent alumni. Another responsibility of the corresponding secretary is the upkeep and maintenance of the social media and website aspects of your chapter. Now, you might be thinking, my chapter has a webmaster. My chapter has a social media chair. This isn't my responsibility. It's their responsibility. You are still responsible to make sure that those are being kept up. You may not have to do all the work. You may not have to do anything at all other than glance over it every now and again. But you need to make sure that these things are being updated and kept up with by those chair positions. If you do not have those chair positions, this is your sole responsibility. You are in charge of making sure that the social media is updated and that the website is updated. Make sure the website is updated with at least at least once a semester with your new officers and your rush schedule. I recommend updating it once a month at a bare minimum. I think that'll give you the most accurate data for your um, anyone that's coming to your website, whether it's um, chapter brothers, alumni, or potential new members. Update your socials with events and announcements. Try posting consistent posts to all your platforms. I like to make a flyer on uh, Canva or PictoChart. And once I've made one flyer, I like to send it out via email and then send it to Instagram. And I have the Instagram, when I was corresponding secretary, I had it connected to our Facebook. So all I had to do was post it to Instagram and it would automatically post to Facebook. Post on your LinkedIn. You'll get a lot of alumni response that way. If you have a Twitter, great, put it on there. If you have a YouTube and you do rush videos, great, put it on there. Make sure that you are updating all of the things that your chapter has running. If you're not using an account, you need to deactivate it. It doesn't look good when you have an Instagram, but it hasn't been updated in three years. Deactivate the account. If you can't and you need help, reach out to your alumni, reach out to the former corresponding secretaries and social media chairs. Now, my favorite section is the gear. I am the editor of the gear. Every chapter is required to submit an article for the gear each semester, not each school year, each semester. The due dates are October 15th and April 15th. You may see a January due date on the CMT. Those are not required due dates. That's for if we were to do a third edition in a year, which we currently do not have plans to do. So you're welcome to submit it in January 15th, but it'll end up in the spring edition where the due date is actually April 15th. These dates are the absolute latest. Please, please, I'm begging, send your articles before the deadline. Set a calendar reminder and say, uh, ignore the due date, turn it in on the first, tell yourself do it. Because the sooner you get it to us, the more time we have to edit it, the more polished your article will be, the more likely it will end up in an edition of the gear. 37% is a number I put at the bottom of this slide. I think it's really important to note that despite this being a requirement for all chapters each semester, last semester we only had a 37% submission rate, which means if your chapter submits an article to the gear, you're doing better than 63% of our fraternity. Please submit to the gear. The more we have, the better our content, the more engaged and informed our alumni are. Um, articles should include title, byline. So a byline is where you put by the author, the university. So mine, for example, would be by Sarah Mente, University of North Carolina at Charlotte, Pi Gamma Chapter, Class of 20. You need to have text. It can be anywhere from 250 to 500 words. 250 words is going to give you about a half a page. 500 words is going to give you about a full page. If your chapter is doing something super interesting and engaging and you think it's worth more space than just a page, reach out. Let me know. If you get me 750 words and some excellent photos, you could have a two-page spread. The possibilities are endless. We definitely need you to have photos and captions submitted with your gear articles. That's something that often gets overlooked, but whenever you submit your article and you don't include pictures and captions, it's not going to be as engaging. And if we end up using stock photos in a place where we could have brothers from your chapter in the gear. So make sure that you're including all of those components. 
this is an example of what a gear article section would look like for chapter news. So you can see there's a full page article here on retreat from uh, Theta Gamma chapter. They raised a ton of donations for a local food pantry. And we also included, because we fleshed this out and got all of this information and it looks so good, we wanted to give them just a little bit more space to talk about some other things that they were doing that was awesome too. So that we did a wellness article in addition to that. Uh, we also have this article on Tuffy Hacks, which was California State University at Fullerton's uh, hackathon. They they hosted a hackathon on our campus, and it was really fun and exciting. And they had virtual DJs in the uh, initial stages of COVID. So um, these these are just some examples. I highly recommend that you try to write articles that are about the events that you're hosting or, or a, an event that you're hosting, one, pick one or two max, or a major change that your chapter is going through. If that's moving to a new chapter house, if that's going from virtual to in-person or in-person to virtual, if it's creating a new position or a new chair that you really want to highlight and talk about how you're making it absolutely rock, please, please reach out and do that. Um, what we're not looking for for content is your your um, chapter officer bios, and we're not looking for a general update of your chapter. Those things will be automatically put in the bin for, yes, you submitted something, but it's not going to make it to the gear because our alumni are not interested in knowing how many potential new members you had at your rush. Not unless it has to do with a greater article. They're not particularly interested in the exact names, majors, and grad years of your active members. The majority of our alumni base is not going to necessarily be from your area. So you want to make sure that you're writing about something that is engaging for all of our alumni readers. Um, if you are trying to submit a newsletter as a gear article, that does not count as a gear article. I love to read your newsletters. It can be a great starting point for finding something to write your article about, but we do not use newsletters as our um, gear articles. So if you want the Schrader points, please, please, please submit an article for the gear. And I think that's all we have for the corresponding secretary. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out. You can reach me at gear at thetata.org or red at thetata.org. I'm also going to let Kunal back on. Test, test, one, two, three. There you are. Uh, Kunal, if you want to give your contact information for the recording so that when this goes out, they can reach out to you, please feel free. Sure. Um, hopefully, the audio is a little bit better this time. It is if not. leaps and bounds better. Your audio is completely restored <laughs> oh now God. that our uh, yeah. thing is over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know, right? um, so, I'm Kunal Sokal. I'm the alumni program director for Theta. And you can reach me on Discord. You can reach me on uh, text, Facebook, LinkedIn, all kinds of things. The best place to reach me would be uh, probably Discord or Kunal uh, Sarkel at thetata.org or Kunal at thetata.org. If you have any problems spelling those, you can find them on the website. And uh, I typically respond pretty, I typically respond pretty quickly. So um, feel free to message me and, uh, about anything you um, you're concerned or interested in, and uh, I'll be glad to have you chat with you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and share the. Theta Ta website here. So if you go to, um, if I go to national officers, I believe you, it can pull yep, you up. Exactly. So you go to national officers, and if you click any of them, let's go email us. Yeah. So you can reach any of your regional directors. You can reach any of your national directors and coordinators. You can reach uh, Sarah Mentai Pi Gamma Class of 2020, the editor in chief of the gear. Um, <laughs> I was looking for yours, Kunal. Oh, there it is at the top. Uh, Kunal yeah. Sarkel, Zydelta 2016. You can find anyone this way. And if you click on it, it'll give you their email and you can contact them. Another thing I do want to highlight if we're still putting this out there is if you go to students and you go to resources and publications and scroll down, it has the most recent editions of the gear prior to the one that is currently in print. So. Right now, 2021 is the most recent, spring 2021, so last year. But that'll give you an idea of what 
articles look like and what yours could look like, some ideas for what you might see and what you might like to do for your articles. Um, I really like having these uh, quarter or half page articles and having the back to back so we can highlight a lot of chapters. But also you can have a two page spread if you have a really great a really great idea and a really great article. It can take up multiple pages, which is great. Um, so that's all I really have about the gear. That's all we really have about um, the corresponding secretary. Please feel free to reach out if you have any further questions.